This is a excerpt of David's words from last week's Sunday service titled The Wheel of Life. Have you noticed how the natural world and even human technology reflects back to us how we are made as human beings and how we function? Think of a bicycle wheel. It illustrates how diverse people with diverse experiences from diverse cultures, races, and backgrounds, and with di very different ways of functioning in life, come together to do something spectacular. At the center is a hub. It is attached to the rest of the bicycle, and through the chain, the hub on the rear wheel is connected to the source of power. You, if you are the rider. The rest of the wheel is attached to the hub by spokes. The hub and the spokes are necessary for a functioning bicycle wheel, but insufficient. Without the rim, the spokes would flop about. There would be no solid structure to the wheel. With the rim, you have multiple triangular patterns that create a stable architecture out of relatively light materials. Three points form the triangle. The relationship of the end of one spoke to the end of another through the rim. The relationship each spoke has with the hub. The tire on the outside of the rim is where the rubber meets the road. A bicycle spoke represents our relationship to what is central in our life. It connects us with what has meaning and power. It connects the hub of life, a connection we share in common with all other people. I like in this piece how it started out asking, have you noticed how the natural world and even human technology reflects back to us how we are made? So another way to say that is, have you ever noticed how everything in creation holds certain principles of creation reflected in how it has manifested and formed? Do you ever wonder why we work so much with metaphors of the natural world? It's because within these examples, they hold a manifest outworking that we can easily see in the physical world of how principles of creation work. So it's very easy to see this nebulous concept when it's showing up right in front of you in this particular form. And this is just another example of how that works. You see, the centering, this hub, this point, that is the center. It is, as he says here, what is central in our life. But in order for that wheel where the rubber meets the road, or our life experience unfolding. In order for that to smooth, flow smoothly, let's say without wobbles, then the central point has to be stable. If the central point is not stable, then there will not be a smooth roll of the wheel. So how does our central point become rooted in what is stable? This is the teaching of orientation. The teaching of inner alignment, of attunement with a capital A. It is by orienting to our central point within the realm where the constant 
is an eternal and absolute reality. Where change is not the constant. As in this reality world, the constant is always constant. You see, I believe that all of this, all of our experience, all of this reality existing within the mind of God. That is how God can exist within all things, because it all exists within him or her, depending on your orientation. It's both, really. And from that reality, we can at any time tune within into this absolute realm and make that our centering point. And when that is so, there is stability in the center, in the hub. And as long as we are holding strong as a spoke, the wheel of our life experience will flow smoothly. These are principles. These are, it is replicated all throughout creation, through the universe, all the way down to our daily interactions. And when it comes into collective situations, as long as the individuals, which will at some point include everyone in this room, because we all hub into some reality that's revolving around us, when we are centered within ourselves, how things flow collectively will also be like a smooth wheel rolling down the road. I loved in Patricia's opening prayer, there was a line about letting the unholy spirits dissipate. Well, I believe there's only one way that happens. And it's not by trying to get rid of the unholy spirits, but by bringing in the holy spirits as such in the song. By bringing in that which has been absent, that has created the experience of unholiness. As we bring in the holiness that is ever present and always available, then we begin to express that, and the two energies cannot exist in the same space, and one is more powerful than the other. But it does require choice. Absolutely, every time. Just as in that stability of the eternal reality as a centering point is always there, it requires our choice. Because it's so easy to center in everything else in this world. The chaos, the drama, the distortions. If that is our response... If that is what we are giving our attention to, our energy to, listening to, looking at, believing in, that is our centering. And that is an unstable hub. And so the only way to shift from an unstable hub to a stable hub is to bring in the true reality. Yeah, it's a choice because we have free will. We're free will beings. We get to choose. We can be in alignment and harmony, or we can be in discord and suffering up to our choice. And yet the opportunity is new every moment and the availability is always there. All it takes is a choice, a turning within, a recentering. And what is real. And it will never go away because it already lives inside of all of creation. It's available in every eternal moment.